The train so powerful it shook towns was no myth. Its thunder could rattle windows, rouse entire communities, and mark the peak of human ambition forged in fire. But before steel giants roared and mountains trembled, an overlooked moment in a silent mind forever altered our destiny. How did steam's first faint pulse become an unstoppable force that changed history? In 1712, deep in the coal mines of England, a new kind of power stirred in the darkness. Thomas Newcomen, a practical man driven by necessity, built a machine that harnessed steam to pump water from flooded shafts. His engine worked by filling a cylinder with steam, then cooling it so the steam condensed, creating a vacuum. Atmospheric pressure forced the piston down, lifting water from the depths. For the first time, fire and water combined to do the work of dozens of men, hour after hour, day, uh, day after day. Yet the engine was slow, hungry for coal, and chained to its work site. Decades later, James Watt studied Newcomen's creation and saw something more. In the late 18th century, Watt's mind turned to efficiency. He added a separate condenser, so steam could be cooled without wasting heat inside the main cylinder. The effect was dramatic. Engines ran faster, used less fuel, and could power not just mines but mills, factories, and ships across Britain. Watt's patent, granted in 1769, unlocked the true potential of steam. With every improvement, the dream of moving beyond stationary engines grew stronger. The age of motion was waiting in the wings. In the winter of 1804, a new sound echoed across the ironworks of South Wales. Richard Trevithick, a Cornish engineer with soot on his hands and fire in his eyes, brought his steam locomotive to the rails of Penny Darren. On February 21st, the world changed. Ten tons of iron loaded onto wagons, 70 men clambered atop, and Trevithick's locomotive hissed and shuddered, ready to attempt what no one had seen before. The engine's high-pressure boiler roared, pistons pounding as the wheels gripped the rails. It moved, slow at first, then with growing confidence, hauling its heavy burden nine miles from Mertha Tidfil to Abbasinan. Eyewitnesses crowded the line, astonished as the machine rumbled past, shaking the ground beneath their feet. Some claimed the very cottages trembled and the mill chimneys quivered. For over four hours, steam and steel conquered distance. By journey's end, the age of stationary engines was over. Motion itself had been set free. Steel rails cut through fields and forests, carrying not just iron and freight, but dreams. Towns gathered at the edge of the tracks, drawn by the promise and the spectacle. Children pressed their faces to glass or stood on embankments, waving as the locomotive thundered past, sometimes nothing more than a blur of smoke in motion. Shopkeepers paused in their doorways, and farmers leaned on their tools, feeling the ground tremble beneath their boots. For many, the train was the first sign that the world was growing larger, that distant cities and new possibilities had come within reach. The whistle's cry echoed through valleys and over rooftops, a sound both thrilling and strange. Conductors, proud in their uniforms, tipped their caps to strangers and friends alike, guardians of this new force that stitched communities together. In the span of a generation, the railway transformed ordinary life into something touched by wonder, a moving symbol of human ambition, forever changing the rhythm of the land. In 1941, the Union Pacific Big Boy emerged from the foundries as something the world had never seen, a locomotive so immense, so powerful, that it seemed to defy the limits of steel and steam. Its body stretched 132 feet, longer than most city blocks, with a wheel arrangement known as 4884. Four leading wheels, two sets of eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels, all engineered to harness unthinkable force. The big boy was not just built to move freight. It was built to conquer mountains, to pull thousands of tons over the steep grades of the American West, where lesser engines stalled and struggled. 
Inside the cab, the heat could climb past 120 degrees. Firemen shoveled coal by the ton, sweat pouring down their faces as the boiler roared and the pressure gauge crept ever higher. One fireman recalled, Four tons of coal gone before sunrise, and when the wheels bit the rail, you knew you were king of the line. Out on the tracks, the impact was impossible to ignore. In towns along Sherman Hill, the ground would tremble as the big boy thundered past. Dishes rattled in cupboards, plaster cracked along old walls, and children pressed their hands to the glass, feeling the vibration in their bones. Local newspapers called it the arrival of a steel giant. Some residents claimed the passing engine could shake bricks loose from their chimneys or jolt pictures from the wall. To the workers who built it, the big boy was more than a machine. It was a testament to human ambition. Each bolt, each piston, each wheel forged in fire and sweat. The men who stood beside it looked small, almost insignificant, dwarfed by its scale. Yet when the big boy rolled out of the yard, it carried the pride of an entire generation. Its whistle echoed for miles, a sound that signaled both power and possibility. This was the locomotive that could shake towns awake, the moving cathedral of the Age of Steam. In the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, another colossus thundered to life the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway's Allegheny. Born from the forges of Lima Locomotive Works, the H-8 class was built for a single purpose, to drag mountains of coal up the steepest grades in America. Its wheel arrangement, 2666, gave the Allegheny a stance like no other. Two sets of six driving wheels, each gripping the rails with relentless force, anchored by a six-wheel trailing truck to support a firebox bigger than most living rooms. Weighing in at nearly 1.2 million pounds with its tender, the Allegheny was a beast of burden, its heart pounding with 7,500 horsepower, the highest ever recorded by a steam locomotive in dynamometer tests. Crews assigned to these engines spoke of grueling shifts, shoveling coal as black dust swirled, the cab rattling with every surge of power. On the Allegheny grade, the H-8 would take hold of 140 loaded coal cars, the train stretching out of sight, and begin its slow, unstoppable climb. At full throttle, the drive rods hammered out a rhythm that shook the ground, sending vibrations through the valleys and up into the homes perched above the tracks. Unlike the big boy, the Allegheny was rarely a showpiece. Its fame lived in the sweat and grit of daily service. Maintenance crews swapped brake shoes and oiled axles at every stop, fighting the toll of relentless mountain work. The air hung heavy with the scent of hot oil and coal smoke. Residents along the C&O line watched as the Allegheny roared past in the night, windows rattling in their frames, soot settling on porches by morning. For the men who ran her, the Allegheny was not a legend. She was a living, working force, the muscle behind America's coal and steel. In the contest of giants, horsepower was measured not just in numbers, but in the raw struggle of engine and earth. The sheer size of the big boy in Allegheny posed a problem older engines never faced. How to move a mountain of steel through twisting mountain curves? Rigid frame locomotives like the Union Pacific 9000 series tried brute force, stretching 12 driving wheels in a straight, unyielding line. On the open prairie, they thundered ahead. But when the track bent, their steel frames fought the rails. Wheels screeched, sparks flew, and the strain echoed down the line. Engineers needed a new solution, one that let giants flex without falling apart. The answer was articulation. Inspired by the mallet principle, these locomotives split their drive wheels into separate engine units, joined by a massive pivot beneath the boiler. As the engine entered a curve, the front section swung gently, guiding the whole machine with surprising grace. What once seemed impossible, bending a hundred-foot locomotive around a mountain, became routine, all because steel learned how to hinge and move.
Inside every steam locomotive, the real drama unfolds in a world of heat and pressure. Water fills the great steel boiler, heated by a roaring firebox until it boils and surges into steam. The pressure climbs, straining against the walls searching for escape. At the engineer's command, valves open and the steam rushes down thick pipes, flooding into the waiting cylinders. There, the force of invisible vapor drives a heavy piston back and forth. Each stroke pushes a connecting rod, turning the massive driving wheels with a deep, rhythmic pulse. The valve gear, an intricate dance of rods and levers, isikaona nos dunwanya, controls the flow, timing every breath of steam, every reversal of direction. Gauges tremble, metal hisses, and the whole machine comes alive, a heartbeat of iron and fire. From the first spark in the firebox to the wheel's thunder on the rails, this is the cycle that turns raw energy into motion, a symphony of power echoing through steel and steam. On February 21st, 1804, Richard Trevithick's locomotive made its historic run, setting in motion a chain of innovations that would culminate in giants like the Union Pacific Big Boy, measuring 132 feet, and the C and O Allegheny, which set the record with 7,498 drawbar horsepower in documented tests. These machines shaped entire towns, their power measured not only in tons pulled, but in the vibrations felt beneath people's feet and the growth that followed the rails. Yet, some details remain unclear such as variations in official horsepower records and the full impact on local communities, as not all operational logbooks and eyewitness accounts survived. Today, preserved locomotives like Big Boy continue to draw crowds, their restoration documented and witnessed by thousands, reminding us that the legacy of steam is part of our shared industrial heritage. The evidence is clear. The age of steam transformed landscapes and lives, and its influence endures in both preserved engines and the stories they left behind.